All right, everybody, today I'm gonna to show you, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to um, fill out the data sheets. It's really simple, uh, but this way you'll be able to see exactly what you would put in each field. Um, and I'll show you the little ambiguities between the three different data sheets. Um, so before continuing to the data sheet though, remember you're gonna be filling this out in the field. It is really important that you've already picked the best spot for the camera and that you follow the recommendations and instructions in that camera instruction sheet that you will have on uh, in your little packet before you actually go to this. Um, and so then when you're actually here, you're gonna fill out just simple um, information on the actual camera station. So that's gonna be the date, uh, the first thing. It says right here, month, day, year. Please follow that format. That's what makes it really easy. So let's say we were filling this out um, June 1st, and not 2019, we're gonna do 2020. It's just a really simple June 1st, 2019. Any other format is okay, but you have to make sure that you specify which format you've done so that when we go back and actually enter that in, we're entering in the correct month and the correct day. Site ID, that should be on your packet, the top left, you'll see um, the name for each site. This is our site one. And so, um, you know, if I were given my cameras in Red Butte and this was site one for that, I would go to that packet, look at the one that's associated with the very first site, and I would go ahead and enter that information in there. Research team, that's anyone you're going out with. So that includes yourself and then anyone that's out there. We're trying to track as many of the volunteers as possible in this. And so I would put my name and please put your full name so that we can kind of track that. And then whoever I'm with at the moment. So I'll put my wife's name. And then that's good for that entire section. For the GPS location, it's uh, simple. You're gonna get those GPS locations off of your Gaia GPS app or whatever you're using to find those. Please go out to the fourth decimal place. That's really important. We need to have it accurate enough that we can actually use it for analysis. And so in this case, we're gonna go out to the fourth decimal. If it gives you more resolution, please use it. So if it goes out to the fifth or sixth decimal point, please fill out the entire thing. We want it to be as accurate as possible. Start time and end time from home. That is entirely for you. If you want to track your hours in any way, shape, or form, you can technically track them from the moment you leave your house to the moment you get back. Um, and so if you want to fill that out, great. It's not necessary that you do. Um, so we'll just say that we got left at 0800, came back at 1200. And so if you want to track those hours, that's the best way to do it. Then detection characteristics. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we go over the actual camera setup, but this is what feature you're actively focusing your camera on. Is it a hiking trail? Is it a wildlife or game trail? Is it a dirt road, a ridge, a drainage? What are you filtering those animals into when you set up your camera? So we'll say that we set ours up on a wildlife and game trail. If none of these options um, work for you, you can always write in whatever you're setting it up on. Detection distance. This is going to be pretty arbitrary. You don't have to actually measure it out with a tape measure or anything. It's more just to make sure that you're giving the camera enough room to actively see what's going on in the area. And so you're really gonna just kind of walk this off until you run into something that would impede the view of the camera. So we'll say that we walked off about 15 paces or so until we ran into something. You go ahead and record that. Then for habitat characteristics, these are really general habitat characteristics. So this is what kind of landscape are you in? Are you in a conifer forest? Is that those, your evergreen trees? Are they what's uh, dominating the area? Or is it a deciduous forest? Are you kind of in a riparian section where you have a little bit more broadleaf trees in your area? Is it a gamble oak or shrub? We should, if you don't know what gamble oak is, just go to the foothills and you'll be able to find it pretty quick. Um, sagebrush, of course. If you're on a cliff edge, if you're riparian, you're gonna circle all that apply here. So let's say we're at the top of Red, uh, or not um, Red View, but the top of Big Cottonwood. Most of that's conifer forest and we found a little stream. So we're gonna go ahead and circle conifer forest and riparian. If there's anything else going on, you can write that in here as well. Finally, vegetation cover. So imagine that your camera is surveying for a 50 degree radius around it. So you have the camera itself, the nice little 50 degree radius. What you're gonna do is within that 50 degree radius, look up and try and figure out how much of the area is shaded or how much of it is um, covered in canopy. And you're gonna include that as your vegetation cover. So let's say we look up and roughly 25 to 50% of the area is shaded and imagining that it's midday, about 25 to 50%. So you're gonna go ahead and circle that. 
and you're gonna record this every single time you go out. And it's okay if this value changes as it goes on. We actually kind of expect that to happen. Then finally, you're gonna take the photographs at the site. That's really important. Um, we try to get an information that's both important for you, but it's also important for us to get an idea of where you're focusing your camera. So when it says forward, back, left, and right, what those are are check marks to make sure that you actually do them. So if you can imagine your camera set up right here and it's viewing out this way, you're gonna take a photo right here, you're gonna take a photo right here, you're gonna take a photo right here, and a photo right here. Basically just a forward facing, back facing, left facing, and right facing photo. After you do that, you're gonna go ahead and check those off. All right, then you're gonna turn it over to the next side. This is where you're gonna do your radial survey. So once again, imagine that your camera's right here, and what you're going to do is you're gonna walk out from that camera in kind of a radial fashion until you get out to about 50 meters. And when you're doing that walk, you're gonna record anything that you see here. And it's gonna be a zero if you don't see it, and it's gonna be a one if you do. So it'll be garbage. Did you see any garbage? No. Nope. Did you see any human tracks? Yep, we saw human tracks. Did you see any side of pets? Anything else that you might be able to find? Then you're gonna go down to wildlife activity and do the exact same thing. You're gonna repeat that survey, or you can do it all at the same time. And you're like, okay, what did you find? I didn't find any tracks, but I found some scat, no carcass or bones, nothing else right down here. And then finally, once you've done all of that, you're then going to sit at your camera site, and if there is a road visible, doesn't matter how far away it is, but if there's a road visible, you're going to set a timer on your phone and count the number of vehicles that drive by in both directions within that five minute span. If you hit 100, you don't have to keep counting beyond that, and you can just put 100 plus. Okay, last little bit is a checklist for you to make sure you've accomplished all your tasks during your actual field work setup. So are the batteries in place and charged in your camera? That's really important, you're gonna need that. Is the SD card in place and is it reading on that camera? Are the settings verified? Did you make sure that you followed the settings that are present in that camera instru uh, installation's instructions packet? Is the date and time correct on your camera? That's, that's the last thing you should check before you turn it on. Is your area clear of impeding vegetation? Is there gonna be vegetation that sways in the wind and causes that camera to go off? Are the photos taken at the site? Is vehicle traffic assessed? Does the camera blink once you turn it on? It should blink for 10 seconds, remember from that other video. Is the cam uh, camera position correct? Did you like where you set it up? Did you make sure it was in the correct position? It's parallel with the ground, even with the horizon. Did you make sure to count those? Is it out of the sun and swaying vegetation as much as possible? Did you complete the data sheet? Did you still have the label attached? And did you display the placard? Everyone seems to forget this. Please, please, please remember to display the pl uh, placard before you go that has the correct date and time on it. So if for whatever reason your camera is not correct, uh, correctly recording the date and time, we have that so that we can go back and we don't have to throw out your data. So make sure that you've done that. And then last but not least, keys are the most often thing we forget out there. Please remember to recover, uh, recover those keys. Okay, so that's the setup data sheet. So that's how you fill them out. I'm gonna show you just the, uh, the differences between the check data sheet and the takedown data sheet. So the check data sheet, two weeks after you set it up, you're gonna go back and you're gonna repeat all of the information from the previous setup. And so all of this is gonna most likely be exactly the same. You might alter the vegetation cover. Maybe you you know have a few things that have changed. You can note that on here, but this is gonna be very similar to the setup sheet. Once again, you're gonna do your radial survey. You're gonna repeat it exactly like you did it before. Things can change within two weeks. And so you might actually record different things the second time you come out. And then finally, this part of this thing is the same checklist that's on the setup sheet. This part though is different. So this is the part where you're gonna have to actually open the camera and check out what's going on. First thing you're gonna have to check if the camera's still functioning. If yes, go ahead and put yes. If it's functioning, what's the battery level? Low means no bars remaining. Critical means there's a blue light flashing on the camera and I'll show you where that blue light will be in another video. And then good means at least one bar remaining. So let's say we're good. How many photos are on the SD card? That will be the very first thing when you open up your camera on the bottom portion, you'll actually be able to see how many photos it's taken. Let's say that it's taken 250 photos for us. If there are more than 10,000 photos, 
Nope, there's only 250. And if, will we move the camera? Nope, we're not going to do it. If your camera has taken over 10,000 photos, for whatever reason, it's swaying vegetation or whatever you um, can think of, you have the option to move that camera. If you move that camera, right here is where you put the new GPS location. Please, 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 if you move your camera, do not forget to fill this out or we will attribute your new site to where it was previously and that can um, mess up our analysis. And so that's how you fill out the check one. The takedown one is very, very similar to the check one. Once again, you have those uh, spots that you have in the check data, uh, data sheet saying how many photos is the camera still working. But now your checklist is much smaller because instead of making sure that the camera's still running, you're just making sure that you've taken it down. So those are the data sheets. That's how you uh, work them. My contact info is on every single one of the takedown data sheets and also this little reminder. So if you have any questions and you're out in the field and you really need help and you have self-service, don't hesitate to contact me. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments while you're out there and I can help you on the fly. Thank you very much.